नमस्ते ओथी वक सलाम 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 अलैकुम शलोम शलोम हाउ यू डूइंग अगेन माय ब्रदर्स यू नो यू गाइस यार यू रियली शुड हैव कॉल्ड मी एंड यार यू रियली शुड हैव गॉट इनटू द ईमेल थिंग बिकॉज़ यू गाइस आर वेरी हैप्पी टू गेट अ कॉपी ऑफ दैट रेपरेशन स्टेट uh you know i appreciate the emails i appreciate the thank yous i appreciate the applause you guys making me blush <laughs> I, uh, you know and uh the reparations movement yes of course it's it's on the main we, that's the reason why we have this show because we're trying to keep these all these issues on uh, on uh, uh you know on the, on the, on the top burner not putting it back on the back burner uh the 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 city council meeting in daily statement indicating that we deserve reparations and the vote that went down at the city council was 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 historic to the degree in which all the world even Europe and newspapers spoke on it that council meeting was historic within itself and i give all praises to the most high god the creator of all heaven and earth that i was there and was able to take part in it but today we i got told you last time we was here last time i was uh, when we had been gave you that special and that special was beautiful i hope you had your v i really hope you had your vcrs on and uh you know cuz that was beautiful now i hope you have your vcrs on today because we got we uh, we have a special person here one of the people that spoke at the council meeting and uh she's been an activist for years she uh she's played roles and and she's been in newspaper articles of uh ever since i remember she was in the million man march and this sister she prayed she was there praying prior to the march and she was in the pyramid and her spirit was a comforting mother spirit at the march and and it gave us the men that came up the spirit of motherhood and brotherhood and i just want to bring i just want to introduce our guest is uh Eve Angel Mama D. I'm just used to calling her Mama D. How you doing, Mama D? Very, very good. Very good. <laughs> you know, and I'm so delighted to be on your program. Oh, and girl. It was so thrilling last week um, when I watched the program. Okay. And it really brought back that whole city council meeting. It brought back wonderful memories. Okay, well, I, I guess when I made the statement, I was going to have them somebody special. I, you didn't know I had you in mind, did you? Well, no. <laughs> I mean, we're all special <laughs> in our own way, but um, Okay, well, but you you to me you are a little extra special because you know that is it's a statement of basically, you know how you have every people up front. You have people that have been up front in the reparations struggle, but you basically has been one of the people that haven't really been up front you been but you've been like behind the curtains and you've been really pulling a lot of strings and getting a lot of things accomplished and and that's the things I want to share I really want to I, I really first want to go off into this meme and mind before we jump off into the reparations because on our show we showed the we, we gave our guests here a, a cut of the meme and march and we 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 showed them scripturally on how the meme and march was the spiritual catalyst that led to the reparations which is the now the the monetary the physical thing the physical aspect of this thing the reward that God's going to give our people but I will, I first want you to go into the the meme and march and exactly you know what you what did you know you know the the, the role that you played in the meme and march and the in the meme and women's march well um you know you have to give yah yahs and hallelujah yah god all the credit and all the praise for whatever happens whatever capacity you are used in and um I'm 56 years old and when I say I've been in the struggle for now at least about 51 years that's a long time but uh my work in the in the struggle does is uh, began when I was 5 years old um years before Rosa Parks you know this little 5 year old is sitting on the front of the bus uh refusing to give up her seat and that was in 1950 uh, and that's when my work officially started because that was a very traumatic experience and it was lasting but it taught me at an early age 
to uh, seek justice. And um, all through school, the fact of uh, coming up through the 60s, when if no matter how black you were, if somebody called you black, those were fighting words. And ever since the Brown versus Board of Education decision that happened in 1955, in which the children, uh, as, the United, uh, as the government said, that uh, six-year-old Linda Brown and those children had suffered so much heart and mind damage that it was doubtful that they would ever overcome it. So to me, that was, that was a profound um, statement. It was doubtful that they would ever overcome it. And we didn't call that um, self-esteem damage, but the, um, the experiment that they used for the historic Brown versus Board of Education decision was dolls. And if you lined up white dolls, oriental dolls, and Chinese dolls before three group of children, if you, the Chinese children looked at all three of those dolls, they would choose the one uh, with the slanted eyes and that looked like them because they liked themselves. The white children would come in with blonde hair and blue eyes and they would see the dolls with the blonde hair and blue eyes, they liked themselves, they would select that doll. But the black children that came in and saw the dolls, it was natural for them to want to embrace uh, their image, to embrace their blackness, but they couldn't do that because black meant dumb and stupid and bad and little children, and I, I, I teach two-year-olds. Two mm -hmm. As a Montessori teacher, I educate the subconscious brain, and we teach two- and three-year-olds the decimal system. So I know what a high level of dignity and the respect that they have for themselves. Children won't even relate to Scribble Scrabble. Now, this is an actual fact. One of my students once did a drawing and he looked at the drawing, and, he, and I said, this is your drawing. You know, let me put your name on it. He said, that ain't mine. That ain't mine. <laughs> That's Scribble Scrabble. That's Scribble Scrabble. So at three years old, this is his drawing. But he could not accept Scribble Scrabble. Now, that's, somebody had told him about Scribble Scrabble. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, that's, that's Scribble Scrabble. And um, looking at your black image, that was Scribble Scrabble. Uh, children couldn't expect, couldn't um, accept that because it was bad and it was ugly and it was wrong. And the Supreme Court ruled that these children have suffered so much heart and mind damage, in other words, so much self-esteem damage that it is doubtful that they will ever overcome it. So there was that 1955, uh, 65. And, you, and, you, and I heard you, you brought this up at the reparations conference. You actually brought up the, uh, the issue with the children at the reparations conference or at the city council a meeting. Absolutely, because that's what this is all about. Mm -hmm. When I think of our, our, our country, and I love America, mm -hmm. America uh, is, for American-born blacks, we are more Americans mm -hmm. than anybody in America mm -hmm. because the laws of violence and brutality that made us non-human beings would not allow us to be anything else. Mm -hmm. A Chinese person can go back to his Chinese roots and, and, and find his family that lives there. Mm -hmm. uh, the same with Irish or uh, any other race on the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. We're very unique and different in that we can't go back to our homeland. The only homeland we know is America. Mm -hmm. We don't have names like uh, our ancestors have. Mm -hmm. We have Brown, Smith, and Jones. We have American names. Mm -hmm. We just recently came up less than 20 years ago with Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. But before then, what holidays we, do we embrace? Mm -hmm. Easter, Christmas, and the 4th of July. And, and the fact is that by us being in America, that's what I've always, I've always let the audience know and, and the, our listeners know that I love America because of the freedoms that we have and the abilities that we have here to do what we want to do. But I wanted to focus, I wanted you though, to focus on where we, to, to come back to that, but I want you to, to, to say what you had, to, your, what you did with the Million Man Mom. Well, uh, it's all, it's, it's like a puzzle. 
And it's, it's hard to tell our story because every time we bring up black history, mm -hmm. it exposes white hatred. Mm -hmm. So we haven't been able to get over that. And the reason it was so important for me to tell you about self-image is because many blacks today, and this is the year 2001, they said, uh, you know, I was never a slave. I was never this. I was never the other. Mm -hmm. But when I see, um, and, and we cannot accept for, as, as a race of people, Mm -hmm. That we are more Americans than anybody in America. Of course, because we were. You know, here. but yet, <laughs> see, uh, a friend of mine pointed out once the difference. He said to me, he said, "You're not an African American. You're American African," mm -hmm. and that is the truth. If we go anywhere on the world, anywhere else visiting in the world, and we open our mouths, they will say, "You're an American." Mm -hmm. Everybody recognizes us as Americans first, but us. Mm -hmm. And it gets right back to that untreated heart and mind damage. Mm -hmm. If the six-year-old children had so much damage on them mm -hmm. that it was doubtful that they would ever overcome it and they were never counseled for the damage, mm -hmm. they were never offered any cure for the damage, mm -hmm. so obviously they still have the damage. So Not only that. So in other words, you, 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 you bring in the issue of the post-traumatic slave ex ex Exactly. Okay. What I have coined as the subjugated syndrome. Mm -hmm. but. The children were never treated. They were never counseled. They passed the damage on to their children. Their children passed it on to their children. And today, our children are being snatched up by the tens of hundreds of thousands and recycled into slavery through adoption ownership. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's because of the untreated heart and mind damage. Mm -hmm. So when we uh, get into the area of reparations, it's, it's like reparations is a way of life. The Jew does not separate himself from the Jewish Holocaust. Mm -hmm. cults. Mm -hmm. But we have been separated from ourselves, separated from our humanity, mm -hmm. and separated from images that look like us. It, in, it, it impacts us economically. Mm -hmm. You don't see white people in other races uh, loading up on buses and trains and coming into our community mm -hmm. to shop and buy. Why? Because yeah. we have no culture that represents us in our community. Well, I mean, I mean, the reason why I keep bringing this Million Man March thing up and we keep going to reparations is that I have a copy here of the resolution of the city council meeting and uh, ba uh, the city council and this is October the 2nd, 1955 and it's, then this is actually uh, a document that, that, uh, that, uh, that talks about the Million Man March that was given to Mr. Louis Farrakhan that you basically were the, were the catalyst that pushed this, that pushed this thing forward. And the thing is, that the reason I keep going back to this, because this, you see the, the first part here and the second part here, it says, whereas October, uh, October 16, 1995, a million men of African origin in a non, in a non, uh, 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 denominational, a non, a non de, uh, de, uh, denominational assembly led by Minister Louis uh, Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam Okay, we'll make atonement at the Washington Monument to reconcile the relationship with, with the Creator, our families and each other. So now that there is, most people when they look at the Million Man March, they don't have this in mind. The fact is that we're talking about reconciling with the Creator. But more importantly down here, it's uh, at the, I, I say one, two, three, four, uh, the fourth statement uh, that's made here at this, uh, 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 this was resolution. It says, whereas the spiritual succession is not a physical move, it is a time to, vis to, to, to visually, uh, to, 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 to visible African uh, uh, nations to, to recall to mind the, and redeem the soul and to renew the covenant with our creator. And see, this is the reason why I, uh, you were the person, and I believe you, this was uh, passed down to Chicago, it's, it's, uh, at this, uh, again at the city council, it's the seal right here, the mayor's signature right here, and you were the person when no one else legitimized the Million Man March. You legitimized it and you actually put it in a level where the prophecy stated that, we, that it was going to be sitting around renewing the covenant, our people renewing the covenant with God. So that's why I wanted to go back. I kept going back there because this is historic, but this is not just historic, this is prophetic. And I wanted you to say, I wanted you to comment on this what was what was what was on your mind when you when well, what was on your spirit what when, was you on it, what, when I when I drafted that? Yes. Well, uh, I attended all of the um, Million Man March um, meetings, uh, etc. 
and um, there was no resolution. There was no um, document that captured what it was about. Uh, you had mentioned, um, I also mentioned in there, the, the fasting and, and, and the praying. Um, the, I think it's the second paragraph there. You can read it. Okay, where it says I think here? it's the, next to the second paragraph, the last. Right here. The, it the says one that before we that. Demand, okay, it says, it says millions of people atoning and spiritual succeeding from the cultural comma, seeking the face of the creator, humbling themselves before him, and acknowledgement that they have wrestled not against flesh and blood, but, but need spiritual power to pull down the strongholds of evil and change the, and, 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 and change the negative media image of black men from the, from the, from, from the uh, mincing, from the mince to miracle. From now menace therefore, to miracle. So that's the beauty of this. So the fact is, is that, is that, and that's exactly what happened, is that the fact is that black men now, as a result of the Mini Man March, are still viewed as, as menace, the menace to society. But the fact is that the but but the fact is but because of the Mean Man March, we are well known to have been the, the group of people, the largest group of people that came to God to ask for forgiveness. And that's where the prophecy comes in at. And our show, and you know on our show we've been stating that the Mean Man March and what was did to the Mean Man March and our prayers in reference to the Mean Man March it went up to God. And because those prayers went up to God, we pray fervently. And we cried out. And because those prayers went up to God, we were able to, he, he was able to hear, hear us according to the prophecy, and he would heal our people. And that, of, of course, led up to the, the, to the reparations, and, and now the reparations just flourishing to the degree in which everyone now is talking about reparations when it's been a subject for years. So now, Mama D, you have been struggling with and dealing with the reparations issue for years. Well, as you uh, just said in that resolution that I drafted on um, the Million Men March, mm -hmm. many people came and there were many politicians in, involved, but they didn't introduce a resolution mm -hmm. because of, of who was given the march. Mm -hmm. Because just as it was with uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad in the 60s and early 70s, so it was with Minister Louis Farrakhan. Mm -hmm in uh, uh, the late 90s when all of this uh, came about. So it was necessary to document what it was really about and what was special about that was that it was a be still fast and prayer visual. Mm -hmm. Now I had done a be still fast and prayer vigil in my nine foot tall pyramid mm -hmm. in the Vidoc where 11 year old Robert Stanford, the, the America's youngest uh, murder suspect, was murdered. Mm -hmm. And I went there, led through by the Holy Spirit, Mother of Wisdom and Comfort, to say to America, our children are killing each other. Mm -hmm. What, where are the parents? And what are we doing wrong? What is the wicked ways that we are dealing with that these things are coming upon us? So I did a be still fast and prayer visual. Now many people had did prayers and many people had did maybe be still, mm -hmm. but a be still fast and prayer. Mm -hmm. It was those three things that made the difference. And long before the, they were saying the Million Men March, mm -hmm. I was saying be still fast and prayer. Mm -hmm. And Minister Louis Farrakhan, this, this was November of 1994, so mm -hmm. nine months later, when those prayers went up from the Vidoc, uh, where this 11-year-old murder suspect was murdered, um, uh, the, uh, October 16th, it was less than a year later, after the prayers went up, the march came down. But it wasn't a march, because when you get a million people together, they don't move. So not one single step was taken. So it was a be still fast and prayer visual. Mm -hmm. The men didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. They had to be stationary. A gathering of these uh, million plus men, because when I looked from, from my pyramid, I was there the night before and spent the grounds on of the million man mark uh, in the pyramid mm -hmm. the day before. So that was the gathering point, because there wasn't anybody out there. Mm -hmm. 
but the media trucks, the pyramid, and the porter johns. Mm -hmm. So um, everybody gathered around the pyramid that day before. So when I looked out, as far as the eye could see, north, south, east, and west was a sea mm -hmm. of people, a sea of human beings. And it was be still, it was fast and pray. They did not eat anything all day long. Mm -hmm. So when they left, I was one of the last people, not only one of the first ones to arrive, but we were one of the last people to leave. Mm -hmm. There was no litter. They disappeared as quickly as they appeared. It was just an amazing thing to see that many people just vanish into thin air with maybe a empty bottle of water on the ground here or there, but not a potato chip bag, not one candy wrapper, just clean Hallelujah. as if they were <laughs> not even there. Hallelujah. It was really a, a truly amazing sight. I have uh, given festivals and gone to festivals in Chicago, and you need 50 trucks to come and clean up after the taste of Chicago. But when you get a taste of the Creator, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 it's clean. And, that, and that's the reason why we had to bring that aspect up because just you, one lone woman, because even Minister Louis Farrakhan that we're aware of and no one else that was there took upon themselves to legally legitimize the march to the degree in which the documentation in which you have. You know, so the beauty, so it, it, it was God that was that was there working with you. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? And, and we realized, you know what I'm saying, you know, that the mother, the mother wisdom you see what I'm saying, you know, so work through you, you see what I'm saying, and allowed you to do these things. And, 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 and then, again, allowed you to be there even before the men showed up. You see what I'm saying, praying and fasting Absolutely. on their behalf. So, so we had to bring that out, you know, and that was a tremendous, uh, you know, that was a tremendous feat. Well, you see, that's the whole idea. A mother teaches love, and love, as I said in one of my poems, is the arms that reaches out and holds people places and things together. Without love, without a mother's love, society falls apart. And there were campaigns to destroy the mother's love. Mm -hmm. So we don't call her a mother today, we call her a caregiver. So we have, uh, man has just rearranged everything and that's mm -hmm. why everything is so messed up. But it gets back to the basic point of a mother teaches love. So Eve, Angel, Mama D, Eve, this is the eve of women not being evil mm -hmm. because the word never said Eve was evil. Mm -hmm. It said she was tricked and she was deceived. Mm -hmm. And as a race of people, we too have been tricked mm -hmm. and deceived. We have been told that we are not the parents of civilization, that we are the boys and girls. We have been taught that we were not human beings, but subhuman beings. And in that Dred Scott decision, it said blacks have no rights. It didn't say white women. It didn't say Hispanics or Asians or Indians. It specified who they were talking exactly. about. It didn't say minorities have no rights. Mm -hmm. It specified blacks have no rights. So whites are bound to respect. They right. are a subjugated race. Did not say Negro race, uh, African American race, did not say exactly. colored race, and did not say black race. So they are a subjugated race, inferior and subordinate whether they are emancipated or not. So today we are emancipated citizens. We're not citizens by birth. So it's been a lifetime struggle of mine not to be rich, not to be famous, but to be uh, about our history mm -hmm. and what happened to us as a people. How did we go from black to colored? Who colored us? Mm -hmm. How did the white genes alter our black genes and create this colored race, create this non-human being? Mm -hmm. And so it's been uh, that when I look at the greatness of America, it means more to me, I think, than most people because I know my ancestors' blood fertilized the soil mm -hmm. where all the people on earth said, so this is the richest nation on earth, but how did it become so rich? It became rich through the suffering and the bloodshed and the misery of our ancestors and for a rich country to get its richness in that manner mm -hmm. and then turn around and say, I will not share even the crumbs with those the descendants of those that have made all of my wealth possible. I said, that is not acceptable. So this, so again, we had the spiritual back in the Mean Man March, then of course the Mean Woman's March, then of course the Mean Family March, and now we have the reparations conference. So at that conference, 
What, what was what, what was being there before you know the mayor, the city? Council? Council and everything, but the issue of what you just brought up, you probably read, but all we're asking for is the fact that they're suffering from uh, some children that suffer from post traumatic slave syndrome, and uh, 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 but some of us have was able to overcome those things, some of us able to shake off the chains of that, and we're just saying that we want money not basically because we got some type of problem, but because we did some work. And but, we want money based upon but, work. But, but I do think that we do have some kind of problem. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we have overcome. Mm -hmm. You know, we shall overcome, but they never said overcome what? Mm -hmm. You see, we're still dealing with, ooh, mama, he's light-skinned and he's got some good hair. Mm -hmm. Ooh, mama, uh, she's light-skinned and got some pretty hair. Mm -hmm. We are still dealing with that. Mm -hmm. Our leaders are saying, didn't your mama teach you black history? Why don't you know this and why don't you know that? My mama's mama was a slave. My grandmother was a slave. Perhaps coming from a slavery standpoint when it was against the law for you to learn to read and write has got something to do with where you are today. Mm -hmm. We haven't put the pieces together because we have been swept up in this thing of we are minorities. No, we don't all share the same history. Only the red man and the black man could be born in America and mm -hmm. still not be citizens in the land of his birth. Mm -hmm. Only the black man has to renew his citizenship every 20 years and get his civil rights and renew his voting rights. You don't have to do that if you are a naturalized citizen. Mm -hmm. you, you, and, and our children want to know why are we so far behind? And just having an Oprah Winfrey or a Bill Cosby or a Michael Jordan or a Michael Jackson does not make up for the historic race that is not making it. We are not making it. They are not recycling white children into adoption ownership. Mm -hmm. They are recycling black children into that. And the same states that physically succeeded from the United States of America to keep the bodies of blacks in perpetual chains are the same people, the new Gingrichs of Alabama and Georgia that has come up with this new wonderful method of recycling slavery. Mm -hmm. and, and, but it's through adoption ownership. Mm -hmm. And why are you going to own our children? We have been legally able to vote since 1965, some 40 plus years. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you overcome 400 years of dehumanization in 40 years? But you, you can, do but, it but in a pipe dream. But you can't say, though, that the city council meeting uh, uh, the, that we were at, that the Mayor Daley statement was definitely a step in the right direction. Well, I tell you this, mm -hmm. cheap the talk has always been cheap. Mm -hmm. But he didn't pass a resolution with some money in it. Mm -hmm. He didn't say the city of Chicago is going to pay some reparations out mm -hmm. for our our problems that we had mm -hmm. with unequal justice in housing. Okay. Dr. King had to get hit in the in the, the head with a rock mm -hmm. to 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 bring open housing here in the cities. Okay. So, so basically, uh, and I wanted to say I led. I was blessed to lead the call uh, for the Million Women's March. It, it kicked off the Million Women's March in Philadelphia in 19, I mean, at 6 a.m. Okay. So based upon what we're saying, and the sister concluded, uh, we still don't have any money. <laughs> That's basically what she's saying. You know, we... Put your money it, where your mouth is. Exactly. That's so the fact is that because of the reparations conference, it was a step in the right direction, but we want some money. We're asking for a million men to receive a million dollars along with the subsidies Thomas Jefferson to receive our reparations. Let us go. Our program is about letting us go with our reparations. Thank you, Mama D, for being here. You start to feel closer to the Lord is true. You take one step, you take two. Repent for thine obvious. Repent for thine sins. Repent for thine obvious. Repent, 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 repent. Repent for thine obvious. Repent for thine sins. Repent for thine obvious. Because you don't, we'll be at the end.